commonly prescribed antibiotic is penicillin. And this penicillin is made up of microorganisms. So all the antibiotics, antibiotic is nothing but antibacterial against the bacteria or against the microbe. So, so penicillin is a commonly used, widely used prescribed antibiotic and it is made up of microorganisms. And fungi and bacteria are also source of many antibiotics. For example, streptomycin, tetracycline, and erythromycin. These antibiotics are source from fungi and bacteria. So, for production of antibiotics, specifically microorganisms are grown separately for production of antibiotics, that is, drugs, medicines. Next, if suppose any animal has any infection in the body, at that stage also, in their food, they mix the antibiotics and give to the animal for the healing of that disease. So that is why antibiotics are useful in animal diseases. They are also useful in plant diseases as well. If they mix antibiotics with the water or with the soil and water irrigate the field. So that is why antibiotics are also used for plant and animal diseases. And all the antibiotics are sourced from microorganisms that is bacteria, fungi and what is one more? Bacteria, protozoa, fungi and algae. Algae doesn't provide the source of microorganisms. Mostly bacteria and fungi produce are the major source of microorganisms for the production of antibiotics. Next is vaccines. Microorganisms are widely used in preparation of vaccines. We see uh, here a lot of about the vaccines in TVs, newspapers, internet, when worldwide programs are there for vaccines. So the most common thing what we hear about vaccine is polio. So polio vaccination program will be there every few months by the government of India. And other than that, there is a disease called smallpox. There is a worldwide campaign for the eradication of smallpox. And most of the smallpox in the world has been eradicated already. So disease causing microbes enter our body. Whenever there is an infection, disease causing microbes enter our body. And then the body automatically produces antibiotics, antibodies to fight these invaders. So these antibodies after fighting with the invaders of the microbes, they remain in the body forever and they act as a resistance for that disease. So antibodies remain in the body forever. So if the anti microbe is weak, this antibody will kill that microbe. But then the antibody will remain in the body forever and will act as a resistance to that disease. It acts the immunity to that disease. So antibodies remain in the body forever and we are protected against that specific microbe. So suppose a chickenpox microbe has attacked, a viral attack of chickenpox is there. Then immediately the body attacks via the, via the antibodies, the body fights with that virus. And once the chickenpox disappears, the antibodies which are designed to act against the chickenpox virus will always remain in the body. And then you will never have a second attack of chickenpox because those antibodies will forever be there. So like that, antibodies remain in the body forever and if we are protected against the microbes, then we are protected against those microbes. So this is how the vaccines also act. Whenever there is a vaccine given to you, the antibodies of the vaccine will always forever stay in your body and protect you against the specific microbial attack. So example, cholera, tuberculosis, hepatitis, smallpox, all these can be prevented by taking those specific vaccines. So that is how vaccines are also helping us. Next is increasing soil fertility. So bacteria and blue green algae, what do they do? The bacteria and the blue green algae take the atmospheric nitrogen, fix it and send it to the soil. So bacteria and blue green algae fix nitrogen from the atmosphere to enrich the soil with nitrogen. They take atmospheric nitrogen, fix it and send it to the soil. Nitrogen acts as a good fertilizer for the soil. Nitrogen is a good major important mineral which is very important for soil fertility. So nitrogen rich soil increases the fertility of the soil. It 
is an important nutrient for the soil. Nitrogen is always required in major quantities for the soil. So bacteria and bluebeer algae take atmospheric nitrogen, fix it and send it to the soil. Thereby the soil becomes nitrogen rich. Nitrogen is the most important, highest required nutrient for the soil. So thereby bacteria and bluebeer algae by fixing the atmospheric nitrogen to the soil, it increases the soil fertility. So they are known as the biological nitrogen fixers. The bacteria and the bluebeer algae microbes are known as the biological nitrogen fixers. How do useful microorganisms help us in cleaning the environment? So we dispose the waste in the garbage around us, that is organic waste. Organic waste includes vegetable peels, fruit peels, as well as vegetable peels and fruit peels, as well as the dry leaves and all these things. So this is the organic waste, the vegetable peels, fruit peels, as well as the dried leaves of the plants, dried stems of the plants, all these are organic wastes. So when we dispose this in the garbage, then what happens? They decompose. They decompose or means after some days you see they don't know, they no longer exist. They break down into small small substances and get mixed up with the environment. That is decomposition. This occurs with the help of useful microorganisms. The useful microorganisms convert this organic waste into manure. That is, they break down those substances into small small particles and mix up with the environment. And that becomes manure. Manure is a good organic fertilizer for the soil. It increases the soil fertility. Manure. Next, microorganisms decompose the dead organic waste of plants and animals and convert it into simple substances. So when plants die or animals die, then their body remains also we no longer see after a few months. How? Why? Because the microorganisms decompose the dead bodies and the dead remains of plants and animals. They break down those big big bodies into simple substances. And thereby after few months, these dead remains of plants and animals get mixed up with the environment. So that is how microorganisms are useful to the environment. They help, they help, in, they help in decomposition of the organic waste composition of the dead remains of the plants as well as the animals. Next are, next is commensals. So some microorganisms are regarded as commensals. Bacteria, especially in the human body, they help in carrying out certain functions of the body systems. Good bacteria, when I am talking about bacteria here, it means good bacteria. Good bacteria in the body helps out in carrying out some functions of the body. So these type of organisms, microorganisms, which reside in our body, which stay in our body, the useful microorganisms, and are beneficial to our body, are known as commensals. So for example, in our stomach, in our intestinal tract, we have some useful bacteria, and also we have lactobacillus. It is good for our stomach, and it helps in carrying out the digestion process. So these bacteria are known as commensals. They reside in our body, they help in carrying out the life functions. Next is harmful microorganisms. So there are many microorganisms around us which cause diseases. These are known as the harmful microorganisms. So disease causing microorganisms are called pathogens. So when we talk about harmful microorganisms or disease causing microorganisms, we will call them as pathogens. And what do they do? They spoil the food, they spoil the clothing, and they spoil the leather as well. So how do these pathogens are causing diseases in human beings? So in human beings, the mode of transmission of diseases, air, the way we breathe, the water we drink, food we eat, and direct contact with the other organism, or physical contact, through all those things, diseases spread as well as their communicable diseases spread. So, for example, common cold, tuberculosis, chicken pox, and cholera. All these spread through air, water, physical contact, direct contact, all these. So, 
So sources of transmission of diseases are A. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the direct contact and the physical contact. So who are the carriers of diseases? The carriers of diseases are house flies which fly around us and insects as well as the animals. How do these how can we say these are the carriers of the disease? So for example, housefly. Housefly flies everywhere, goes and sits on the human ex excreta of the animals and goes on sits on the garbage. There, when it sits on the animal excreta and on the garbage, the harmful organisms on that, that is pathogens on that, get in contact with the body of the housefly. And then when the housefly comes and sits on the food we eat. Those pathogens go in contact with the food we eat and we consume, when we consume that food, we get diseases. So that is how house flood ends. Then we have animal diseases also, bird flus. Bird flus affect hens and pigs and we consume, when we consume the meat of those animals, the disease causing pathogens enter our body. So that is how these act as carriers of disease and transmit disease to the human bodies. For example, tuberculosis is caused by bacteria and the mode of transmission is by air, airborne virus, airborne bacteria. Then measles and chicken pox, they are caused by virus, they can spread via air or by direct contact. Next hepatitis, it is a harmful disease, it is a viral disease, it spreads through water. Then malaria, malaria is caused by a microorganism, protozoa. It spreads by a mosquito, anophilus mosquito. And typhoid. Typhoid is a bacterial disease caused by bacteria. It spreads via water. So that is how disease causing organisms play a role in our day to day human beings' life.